microphone, camera. As you probably know, there are various ways to save and reuse your work in DaVinci Resolve. There are, of course, the power grades for your color. There are also the Fairlight Global Track presets, like this one right here. There's also the Fusion Effects things like these lower thirds or any other kind of graphic. Maybe you have your most used media in your power bins, things like music or an intro like this. But wouldn't it be great if all these repetitive tasks were automatically set up for you so that you could just throw in your footage and it would already be colored and the audio would already sound polished the way you like it. Your graphics, music, intros, all of that would already be set up so that you could just get straight to work. Well, that's what I want to talk about in this video. We're going to look at how to set up a project template that's really ideal for repetitive content like YouTube videos or maybe video podcasts where the lighting setup, the audio setup is pretty much always going to be the same. The flow of the edit is going to stay the same and uh, you just want to have a very quick turnaround time. So I think this video is going to be full of a lot of workflow tips that are going to save you a lot of time. So let's go ahead and jump inside Resolve and see how this works. Okay, so I'm going to set this up using the edit page. The first thing I'm going to do is come down here to the project settings. I'm going to choose 4K and 23.976 for my frame rate. So you want to select what you would normally use for this type of project. And uh, I think everything else we can leave as is. So I'm not going to be setting up any kind of color management at the project level. I typically just use the color space transform tools for my color management, but if you use color management, you can set this up here. And then under Fairlight, since we are making a template for YouTube, they recommend negative 14 for the target loudness level. So I'm going to set that up there and let's hit save. OK, so now let's set up a couple of bins over here in the media pool. So I'm going to right click and let's create a timelines bin as well as a media bin. And inside the media bin, let's create a footage subfolder as well as music and assets. You're probably familiar with the power bins, which is basically a permanent folder that lives in all projects in your database. So you can store media that you normally use. But sometimes if you just drag in a piece of media from your power bin, you'll notice that it adds that piece of media in your root directory in your media pool. So over time, things can kind of get unorganized, which is why I created a separate assets folder. Now this is only gonna exist in our template. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in our intro and outro animations inside the asset folder right here. And if you have some music or sound effects that you always use, you can also put that in your music folder. And for this, I'm actually just going to use some placeholder media. This isn't going to live in the template project. This is just going to help us design the template, but we're going to delete it at the last minute. OK, so let's come up to timelines and I'm just going to right click here and create a new timeline and let's just call this main and we can use the project settings because we set this up ahead of time. So if we hit create, that gives us a 4K 24P timeline. And let's just go ahead and put in our placeholder media. Now I want to leave a little bit of room so that I can put our beginning intro animation and we can go ahead and add our music down here below. And we can also add the outro and I'm actually going to kind of put it, you know, maybe out here. Now this clip is only uh, 45 seconds. You know, every video is going to be a different length. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of room there. Now let's work on our color and our audio. Now I don't want to actually do anything to this original clip because like I said before, we're actually going to delete this at the very end. Now what I want to do instead is actually make a compound clip. Uh, but before I do that, I'm actually going to make another folder over here just for our compounds and if we select it and then right click our clip create a new compound clip uh, we can just call this a cam it will automatically go inside this folder which we have selected so now this is a compound clip so let's go ahead and right click just to give it a different color to help us identify what we're working with and now i can actually apply my color to this compound clip so at this point you want to really you know tweak your color to how you would like it in every video now, obviously you do have the power grade folder, which is similar to the power bins. There's just power grades that exist in all projects, but even taking the step out of the equation where you normally would have to import your footage and then go apply your power grade, 
Uh, because we're applying this power grade to the compound clip, we actually won't even need to apply the power grade every time we start a new project because we can just replace the media that goes inside the compound clip. So we're gonna kind of do the same thing with our audio. So let's hop over to Fairlight. And uh, as you can see, my left channel is louder than my right channel because my microphone actually records a safety track. So in case I get too loud on the main channel, I can preserve some of the peaked audio using my safety track down here. But it looks like this all looks fine. So I'm actually just going to right click over here and change my track to mono. And we can also go into the clip attributes here and switch this to mono and use that left channel there. Uh, let's also go ahead and name this voiceover and music. And at this point, you can go ahead and apply any sort of audio plugins or compression that you would normally use. So you can go through here and apply all your normal audio stuff that you would normally do for this type of content. And normally I have to boost my audio a little bit. Uh, obviously, you know, you could do that with the makeup slider here. But as you can see, as you do this, it doesn't actually increase the waveform. So what I typically do is kind of have this at a comfortable range, but then I'll actually turn up the volume on the clip itself. That way it's a little bit easier to see and it's louder. Uh, it's still not peaking or anything like that. So I usually have to turn this up by six decibels. And again, because we're doing this to the compound clip level, we will not have to do this every single project. So now we have our color and audio the way that we like it. Let's go ahead and add any sort of graphic overlays or titles, things like that, that we would normally use. So I'm going to go to the titles here and let's say we want to use, you know, a title like this. I'm just going to drop this. So we have our beginning intro animation. We have a little bit of speaking here. And then let's say we have like a, a title card with maybe the topic of the video or the title of the episode or something like that. Maybe we'll change the header to say episode one, for example. And I'm actually going to make one small change to this title. So I'm going to click this magic wand to open it up in the fusion page. And I'm actually going to bring in a media in node and let's connect this out to media out and in the inspector I'm going to change the media source to background so this will pull through whatever we have underneath this title and uh, I'm just going to merge our title right over it and then after our media in I'm going to add a brightness contrast as well as a blur node and what I'm going to do is go to the beginning here and let's make a keyframe for our gain and a keyframe for the blur at zero. And then we're gonna go ahead to frame 20. Maybe we'll blur this about 15 and we can lower the gain, something like that. And then if I select both of these nodes, I can grab both of those keyframes there and hit F to flatten. And then if I hold control, I can grab these and I'm just gonna put them at the very end of our title here and then hit V to reverse these. So now we have our clip or whatever we have underneath this title it gets dark and blurry and then our title comes on and then we fade back. So now let's go back to the edit page. Now that effect is all contained within this title. So again, if we were to replace what goes underneath there, this would also get this fade effect that we have here. So let's also add maybe like a lower third like this and I'll just change the name to my own. And then maybe later down the road, we have a subscribe reminder so we can use something from M buttons. I think this one will work fine. Let's put this right over our timeline and using the content controls, we can reposition this, maybe scale it down a bit so it's not covering anything up. So hopefully you kind of get the idea. We're just basically putting down any sort of graphic or overlay things that we want to show in every single video. And again, we can always modify this when we're actually using the template, but really right now we're just kind of putting things in a general location where we think we might use them. Now, obviously this little placeholder clip that I recorded is only 45 seconds and we're probably going to be using, you know, longer footage in the final project. But you can see here, I can't actually extend this out any further because this clip is only 45 seconds. But if you actually right click this and open in timeline, you can actually slide this down and then double click to get back to the main timeline. And now you'll see that you can actually extend this out. So I'm just going to push this out all the way and then right click to get back to the timeline and then slide the clip back to the beginning. And now we basically have an eight minute container for any potential video that we throw in here. Okay, so at this point, 
Uh, we're pretty much ready to save this, but before I do that, I'm actually going to click on my timeline view options and enable the stacked timelines. And that gives us these tabs. So now we can actually right click and open a timeline. And you can see we've got different tabs for each of our timelines. And this just helps kind of stay organized. It gives you a visual idea of where you are so you don't get lost. And now I'm just going to delete the footage that's inside of my ACAM compound clip. And then if I go to my footage bin right here, I'm also going to delete this. And now we can just hit save and we're basically ready to go. So now if I open up my project manager, the way we're going to use this in the future, uh, well, there's actually two ways. We could right click and choose open and read only mode. And it gives you a little disclaimer saying, basically, if you try to save, it will ask you what you want to name a new project and it won't save on top of this. It'll just create a new project. But I think it's actually a lot easier just to simply copy and paste right inside of the project manager. So control C, control V. And then I'm going to right click this one and rename this to, let's say, YouTube video one. And let's go ahead and open that. And now you can see we just have a blank template ready to go. So what we can do is put in some different footage. So I'm going to use uh, a different clip that I recorded on a different day. And I'm just going to drop this into the ACAM timeline. And if I go back to my main timeline, you can see everything's already colored. Everything's in the right spot. I've got this title effect that blurs and darkens my background there. And now obviously I'm going to need to trim this because we haven't actually done any editing yet. So we can trim this back. Something like that. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt and this is- And there we go. That's basically everything I had to do. So if I disable my color, you can see that it is in fact still S-Log, but it's receiving that same color correction because again, we did this to the compound clip. If you go to the color page, you can see all of my adjustments are already applied. Same thing with the Fairlight page. This is already set to a mono track. All of my presets, effects, dynamics, EQ, plugins, all of that's already applied. Okay, so let's take a look at how this works for a multicam project template. So uh, you'll have to use your imagination today. Uh, it's just me. So you can kind of pretend like maybe this is a guest on a podcast and we have the podcast host or something like that. Now over here in the timeline spin, I'm going to right click and let's make a timeline. But this time I'm just going to call this one multicam. Okay, and then we can drag in our footage into this timeline. Now these are obviously recorded at different times, so there is no sync. If you use something like Zoom or another video chat service, then you're in luck because those usually start the videos at the same time, so there's no need to sync anything. But in a minute, I'll show you how you can still use this project template idea and have flexibility to sync different angles and things like that. So just like before, let's go into the compound bin and let's right click each of these and select new compound clip. So maybe for this one, we can call this guest. This will be the host. And at this point, we can go ahead and do our color like we normally would. So uh, I'm just going to apply a quick power grade onto each of these. That just basically takes it from S-Log into Rec. 709. Now I'm not actually going to go into Fairlight just yet because we're not actually using these audio tracks right here. We are going to use the audio from the compound clips, but this whole thing is going to be a multicam clip. So now what I'm going to do is hold Alt or Option and just select these top two video tracks here. And then I'm still holding Alt. I'm just going to drag these up. So now we have a duplicate. And what we can do now is let's select the top one here and maybe move this over to the left side and even crop it like this so that it cuts off in the center. And then with the one right below, we can also push this to the right side. So now we kind of have like a split screen layout. Now if I select both of these, we can right click, select a new compound, and I'm just gonna call this split. So now we should have three compound clips, a split screen layout, the guest, and the host. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is just select the audio by itself and copy now what we're going to do is go to the timelines and right click our multicam timeline and convert this to a multicam clip. And it disappears because it's no longer a proper timeline anymore. So we have to actually right click and make a new timeline. 
and I'm just going to drag in my multicam clip. Now, as I said before, uh, I am going to use the multicam function, but I don't care about the multicam of the audio because typically in a podcast, both audio sources are going to be active the entire time, whereas a video angle, you only need one at a time. So I'm just going to paste those two audio tracks that I had copied from earlier. So now I have my compound clip audio, which means I can go ahead and go into Fairlight and do any sort of audio preset work that I want to do. Now back on the edit page, if we click on this dual viewer mode button up here, then we get these two viewers. And right down here, we can select the multicam tool. And here you can see all three angles. And so basically how this is gonna work, when you drop in your footage into those compound clips, you're just gonna go through your timeline, hitting one, two, or three on the keyboard to cut to different angles, while also cutting out coughs or anytime one person talks over the other. So you get to take advantage of the video multicam editing while maintaining complete control over each individual audio source. So let me actually undo all of those little edits I just made so that we're starting fresh. And we can go ahead and just add some overlays and all the normal stuff, just like we did with our single cam edit. So maybe I'll use this little M podcast intro here. And it's just like before, so you could add your outro, your song, and all that kind of thing. But remember, this is just the template. So what I need to do is actually go into my footage folder and I'm just gonna delete these and let's open up the guest in its own timeline, as well as the host. And we might as well do the split in case we want to adjust the positioning of each angle. And so now at this point, we can just delete the offline media because we deleted the footage and we're ready to go. We can go ahead and save this out. And using the template is exactly the same. We just copy and paste, rename, we'll call this episode one, and let's open that project. Now let's test this out. So let's say you actually don't use zoom and all your camera angles actually record at a slightly different time and you're going to have to sync them. So a quick trick that you can do is uh, I'm just going to import the same footage I used. Now I'm going to open up my guest or host. It doesn't really matter. One of these sub timelines other than the split timeline. I'm just going to drag in both of them and just do the sync inside of here. Now again, these aren't actually recorded at the same time. So there is no syncing necessary. But at this point, what you could do is kind of line up your audio. You can you know, select them both, right click and auto align either based on time code or waveform. And once you have them synced, let's just say that this is where these two clips are synced. You can just create a cut point in the same position on both clips. And then let's delete these and make sure they both start in the beginning. And I'm just going to take this top one here and hit control X to cut that clip. And then I'm going to go to my other timeline here. So in this case, host, and then I'm just going to paste this in here. Now we know that these both start at their synced time and that will ripple into the split screen layout as well as the full episode. And as you can see, everything's already color corrected. And if I switch this to multicam, all of my camera angles look good. Our audio sounds good. We already have our graphics, our lower thirds, everything's ready to go and we didn't have to really set up anything other than syncing the footage. So I hope you found that video helpful. If there was something that was maybe unclear, just leave a comment down below. We'll see if we can make a deeper dive on this kind of thing or any other kind of topic that comes to mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good rest of your day and we'll see you next time. <laughs>